Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my interviews. We are worried. Well, a lot of us are worried. If you've got any money in the bank, if you've got, to, if you enjoy spending money, if you like to be paid in money, we get slightly worried now with the advent of these CBDCs that are going to basically turn our money into I don't know what. Uh, probably something that's controllable by the government with a, a credit score against you. And a lot of people have been thinking, what the hell can we do? Is there an alternative? Well, today I'm very excited to bring to you a gentleman called Gareth. And we're going to talk about something called the Virgil currency, which is actually labour certificates, or to put it another way, a different type of money. Intriguing. Let's get Gareth on the screen. Hello, Gareth. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? You're Lo right. Lovely to meet you. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, yeah, as I said at the beginning of this, I think people are beginning to get a little bit worried. They're not quite sure. We hear the banks are collapsing. People are taking some cash out. I had an email from somebody who said that their um, sister went to the bank, asked to get £10,000 of cash out. They were told to come back the following day. And they spent an hour with the police on mm. what they were going to do with their own money because it was in cash. But it, I mean, it's it's madness. So, it is. And, and people will have noticed too that banks are closing, bank branches are closing, which means ATM machines aren't as common as they were as well. Um, so yeah, it, it is a problem and I think people are starting to notice it. And of course, at the same time, we've got in an amazing coincidence, all the governments of the world launching their CBDCs, their digital currencies, all at exactly the same time, you know, with a consultation, something going online. But it, it feels like it's a done deal and that we are going to get um, digital money, whether we like it or not, linked to a digital ID. And I know lots of people are very worried about that. And some commentators have said, and I think they might be right, if that system replaces cash, the money system that we have now, uh, that's the end of human freedom forever. Yeah. Yeah. How do we how do we remove it? If all your trading is tracked and everything is digital and relies on mobile phones and the internet, it's quite a scary thing. It, it, absolutely. And as you say, it's almost as if this has come from on high, everyone doing it all at the same time. Yeah. Well, it, and it is interesting that... Um, you know, if you, you you can be easily be called names. You can be called, you, you've heard the one, conspiracy theorist, yes. for pointing out things that are facts, like yeah. the, the Bank of International Settlements. They have this on their website, and they pr present this at, at conferences. They talk about CBDCs and the technicalities of how it's going to operate in the future. Uh, and the World Economic Forum yeah. have got lots about digital ID and the need or digital ID on their website. And they have people like uh, Tony Blair um, saying that there's a real impetus now for digital ID and digital currency. And I think the people, in fact, say, uh, w w you know, where yeah. to impetus yeah, where, from? Where's this impetus? I think it's your impetus, uh, Mr. Yeah, Blair, not not, uh, not our impetus. Mm. Uh, and and we, all, we know now, and, 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 you know, we can pretty much prove that yesterday's conspiracy is today's news. It, it, it's a thing that does seem to happen with many of these things. Um, it, just, it seems to be a reaction sometimes to people not wanting to know how bad the news is. But I think with this, with the idea of digital ID and digital currency together, we've got we've got some time to, to act against it. I think we have to resist it. But I think it's a very serious problem coming down the line for mm. us. Um, it's not to say that the money system is perfect at all. It doesn't really work for us. It doesn't really work for the people. And it was never designed to. But of course, as you've explained before, and you've had other guests explain, um, cash or even just using your card, there's there's some privacy there. There's some. It's just about whether you've got the money. Yes. Have you got the money? Yes, you have. You can. The transaction can can take place. But all the all the CBDCs. That are being worked on right now and, and, and are going to be issued have this idea of being programmable and that's the the frightening thing yeah. that um the, the government the controller the central bank can decide what what you can buy and where and when and um you know program the currency so it becomes more like a, a digital ration book really yeah and and i mean this is one of those things that surely must 
wake people up in the fact that that we're so used to being able to you know even if it's something as simple as with your child that has has a tooth out and the tooth fairy comes along and now the tooth fairy has to uh, be a member of the central bank and is approved whether the tooth fairy can visit your child and uh, give you your sixpence or whatever it is these days. Uh, yeah. That, and, 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 and how, a- and, you know, for a child to leap under the pillow in the morning and then find, oh, where do I have to look to see? Oh, it's on a phone that, it, you know, it's recorded on. And presumably if you're like a three or four year old, it's on your father's or mother's phone. It's not the same, is it? Because it can't be made to work, can it? It means a massive change to the culture. Mm. I mentioned this to to some to some young people recently, only I think about seventeen years old, and they were as horrified as as older ones are as well. And one one of them said, "Yeah, well, what about all the all the homeless people? What about all the buskers? Yeah. What about you know? It, 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 okay, so homelessness is a problem, but one of the things we can do is we can help people out here and there with with cash." Um, someone gave me some cash just yesterday for for helping to deliver something to, to their house. You know, it's there, there. There are these uses of cash, and when you think about them, if they're all to be removed, and the entire currency is on, it's just on your phone. Also, it doesn't make any sense. What's what's backing this new digital currency? Where is it being mined from? Yeah. What is the, where is the, the the real value? Where is the gold, the silver, the copper, whatever it is? Where is it? And of course. It does nothing. It, it, exactly. And I, I mean, we've kind of come to terms with the fact that the banks can just print money and make it out of thin air. And, and whilst it's not a great system and it's making these bankers lots of money, this hmm. new system hasn't even got the illusion that there's any sense of trust about it. Uh, I, I, and in fact, it has much more of the you're guilty before anything because we know everything that you do with that money uh you can't even tip your taxi driver or your waiter or anything without them going oh okay and and then if that's attached to some sort of credit score that you know you've got to do you you've got to do good deeds uh in order to be able to then go and have that holiday or fly somewhere or travel more than 10 miles from your home uh it's it, it you know it takes away the humanity of the individual to be able to do things spontaneously. So it's... Yeah, we hear we, we hear talk too of this idea of a trust free internet. Um, that's that's a phrase we've heard recently, different places. The idea that you're going to need to sign in to use the internet, so that your use of the internet is all tracked as well. Yeah. That's a possibility, but you can see how a digital ID would make that possible too. Hmm. Um, and again, yes, it kind of criminalizes everyone, doesn't it? Um, and you've got some some countries where um, cash is being phased out in 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 the form of um, you can't spend more than a certain amount of it. So I think that's happened. I think it's happening in parts of the European Union. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty certain that's happened in Israel, where you know a certain a certain amount of the economy was was criminalised overnight by yeah, fixing I'd... limit of say three thousand or a thousand, whatever it is. I think the... it was like a thousand euros in cash you couldn't spend. And yeah, like, I, don't, I, I can't remember what the currency is in Israel, but it was that, and I think they've done it there, which for, for some people who've always traded cash in quite large amounts, yeah. there's the criminals just for, for wanting to keep their transactions. But, yeah, private. Is that, where actually is that crime? I am paying my bill in a currency, legal tender. I am paying it as I have always done. And you're now saying I'm a criminal. I mean, we have to push back against this nonsense. We do, we do. And when, when you, as soon as you have those kind of limits, you, all you need to do then, once that's established, is you just bring down that number. Mm. It's a thousand, then it's five hundred, then it's then then it's you know, yeah. it can be zero eventually um, for cash. So yeah, it is something I think we need to to fight back against. And then that's why I wanted to talk to you about um, uh, Virgil in in Austria. Um, which I think is it's an, it's one of these examples of where um, a local area introduced its own currency. Um, now that's happened lots of different places, and Stroud is another one more local to us. But the thing about Virgil, and I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, I don't really speak German, is that it was a phenomenal success in in the year that it ran. So that was back, back in 1931 into 1932. 
So as you say, Stroud, I mean, I remember Swindon had their own pound. Lewis near me had its own pound. Um, and we had the Bradbury pound that came out when, I think in the, it was just before or just after the Second World War. I forget the date now. Um, yeah. So we had lots of these examples. So this is one that was in Austria. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I introduced this because it was a labour certificate. Shall I find a picture of it? Uh, you've set sure. very cut. Now, I, I've got a horrible feeling I'm going to end up going to a big fat gentleman. Um, <laughs> first well, of there all. we are. Uh, well, let's, let's, let's know our enemy. Yes. Let's, um, let's have a look at um, Augustin Cartens um, from the Bank of International Settlements. And I think this is uh, a wonderful visual metaphor for central banking. This, this character. Um, he's certainly he, eaten a lot of pies. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? And he's leading, or his organization, the Bank of International Settlements, is the central bank for the central banks. And they are pushing the CBDCs. Um, it's kind of their, uh, their idea, their thing. They want this um, more than anyone else. And it's being sent down from them. So right. the, the complete opposite of any kind of democratic move, which would be something that comes up from the, from the people and, and, and gets, you know, popularity, mm. uh, something just being imposed on people. Okay. So let's get rid of that. So here we go. This is the, yeah. the actual note. Mm. Mm. And it's, it's unusual from a, from a bank note because you've got uh, what looks like stickers on there. Yeah, so the, the stamps are to keep the cash moving. And this is why it was a success, because um, uh, it moved quickly. It was passed around quickly because it lost a little of its value um, each month unless it got the stamp at the municipal office, the town hall, um, was, was affixed. And there's a small payment that you make for that. So the Stroud Pound had this as a feature as well. Oh, right. Um, and so what that means is people don't want to, to hang on to it for too long mm. because it loses 1% of its value, for example, each month. And the idea with these um, uh, labor receipts or labor notes was that each year they'd be replaced. So once you've got a, one that's full with all 12 stamps, that gets taken away and swapped for a new one with space for, for 12 new stamps or stickers uh, to go around for the next year. But it only really ran for, for one year. But, but the other thing that, was, that made it successful, and this is the key thing, is everybody was happy to use them. So they were issued by the, by the council, the municipality in Virgil, in the town, um, and they were used for wages. Um, the, the, the bank would accept them. Uh, the workers accepted them. Uh, shops were, were enthusiastic about them. Um, and so you had this new currency running alongside the, the Austrian national currency at the same time, which was completely sluggish and had, and had come to a halt because that was what happened in the Depression. Um, it, anyone who had money just hung on to it and, and it was losing value all the time. And so the mayor there in that town saw what the problem was or the, the linked problems. We've got high levels of unemployment, 30 or 40 percent unemployment. We've got a whole backlog of maintenance that needs to be done in the area. Um, that's the town there, isn't it? That's the, that's the town now. Yes, and you know, I'm sure it's very yeah. beautiful. I'd love to. I'd love to visit. Um, yeah, and and it's a it's a key town. It's on a it's on the railway, um, and it's got quite an interesting history as well from the from the Second World War. Um, but yeah, uh, and they they realised what the how the, to solve the problem. That what was missing was the lubricant, right? Money. Yes, and that answers the question. I think what is money? It's the central question with all, with all this, and it's a difficult one to answer for many people. You know, I've asked my friends, "What what is money?" And you know, when they think about it, what is it? Yeah, really? it's something it's we note. understand, but we it's so difficult to put into words. And then it's different from currency, yeah. as well, which is which then that also baffles me. Mm -hmm. Well, money, I think, is information. That's really the answer. And, and it's a lubricant. It's just to make these things happen. So if money is working well, you don't worry about it. You don't think about it. It's a bit like punctuation. It, yes. It's in the background and it does its job. And that's really what money should do. But money isn't doing that, really. Um, it's working for, well, these, these other organizations, which is why we've got this, you know, the changes in prices, the, the fact that whatever money you have in your bank account is worth a little bit less tomorrow and mm. the next day and the next day. And it's been like that 
for a very long time. Whereas in Vogel, sorry, Virgil, what they managed to do was put this new currency into operation and it held its value. Prices didn't go up and everyone was enthusiastic and, and happy about it. And it drew some uh, macro economists came to study it while it was while it was operating. So it became a kind of interesting experiment too. And of course, they solved all the problems it, it, almost instantly. They had m money coming in to the council, so they were able to fund all the things that needed doing. So while everywhere else in the area, and certainly all across Europe and America, you've got this depression, they were able to tarmac the roads and put in new street lights and um, new paths into the forest and um, building works, quite big projects. They built a new concrete bridge over one of the rivers. And I, I don't know whether it's still there, but it had a plaque put on the bridge, which said um, something like built in whichever year it was, 31 or 32, with with the free money system, which wow. is what they which is what they called it. And yeah. so how well, how would it, how would how would it operate? Would people take their 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 existing money and then invest in in this and sort of buy the labour certificates to to swap it in? So once that's in, then that's traded around very quickly, and it's going from pillar to post. And and obviously at, at the end of that year when they decided that that it would done its job it went back into the the normal currency or the normal money is that well, okay so so on, on these on these technicalities i'm not an expert right okay uh, but there are various possibilities and with the virgil currency some people say that it was a success because it lost some of the value each month a little of the value went went so people were, were keen to to, to, keen to keep it, it going keep the economy going and, and so people weren't hoarding the money because there would be no it. point but, but there wasn't any point anyway because people were stuck for work and, you know, it was necessary right. to have a currency that shifted yeah. quickly. So some people have argued that that wasn't so important, that aspect of the currency, that it, that it needed these stamps. That wasn't really the reason it was successful. It could, it could have worked just as well without that part to it. Mm. Um, but so, I don't know exactly how, how you'd back it. I can imagine you could have a store locally of something that is very valuable. Um, and these currency notes relate to it in some way. That might be. That and, might be. And way. What, what was to stop? I mean, I may be asking you questions you can't answer here. But what was to stop people f forging the notes? Um, well, well, nothing. Um, I guess you'd have to be quite a competent forger. And of mm. course, as forgeries develop, so do the technologies for creating something that can't be forged. Yes. So. Um, I don't think that was a problem. The the, the mayor of of Virgil, in his report, he said that there were no complaints about the system. I mean, he's, he was biased because he, he kind of invented it, but there, there wasn't that problem. Right. That didn't happen in the time that it was used. Um, so, so, so yes, it's, it's a success and it's one possibility, but the, the key thing is that everybody was enthusiastic about it. it yes. So I've worked in um, you know, trying to develop some of these local currencies. Um, a particular project uh, a few years ago and the problem is you don't get everyone involved and if you haven't got everyone involved it kind of tends to fizzle out or you've got mm. lots of people all offering alternative therapies but you haven't got plumbers and, and electricians and shopkeepers yes but of course what happened in Virgil was they they introduced it gradually and I think it was maybe 50 percent or 75 percent of the workers wages for the municipality to get it started but then you can increase it you can increase it gradually and get it moving and you can also have a, a, a plurality of currencies yeah you can have a, a local currency which is for this for shifting things along you can have something else that stores value silver or gold or, or whatever it is you can have something else for saving money for, for to spend on something after a time there can be different kinds i suppose I, yes i suppose that's something that that um often doesn't occur to the uh, the average person on the street because we we're so used to having this pound shillings well it's not pound shillings and pence anymore is it but the, 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 you know but this what do we what do we call it sterling um yeah. and and yet people of course they they invest in all sorts of things they invest in uh, ices and they invest in bonds and they invest in gold and silver and so if you're mm. storing it you're not really taking cash out of the bank and sticking it in a uh, in a duvet under the bed or anything like that so we we do that anyway this is just that as you said the lubricant 
um, that is in your hand and it's private so that nobody is there. So do you think then, in actual fact, with the advent of the CBDCs, and if people understand the fact that these aren't really a good idea because it's centralised and because it's programmable and it Mm. could then have that control to stop you, prevent you from from doing it what you wish, that actually more people are likely to be in favour of something which has not got that control. Um, Whereas in the past you had the Lewis pound, the Stroud pound, where they're just looking for a local alternative without Mm. the threat of fiat money disappearing. Whereas now we're in that sort of, well, we could have that CBDC stuff or... We've got a real point where we can say, well, actually, do we want that? Let's. Is there something else? Yeah, I, I, I like to think people will see that the the convenience of a CBDC is its only benefit, yeah. and that everything else about it is is negative. The centralized aspect, especially, and um, and I'm hoping people. I think if people in the early 1930s in a small town in Austria were able to create this phenomenal success surely we can surely we can recreate it the the main problem i think is not from the the people in any locality it's from the central bank and of course that's what happened in Virgil, as you can imagine um the, the central bank in austria got wind of this came to see what was going on there was a court case and they shut it down and they said um you know the, the mayor has, has issued illegal money and and they fought against it but lost the appeal because mm. we all know how the courts work and these corporations and how they operate and so that was the end of of the experiment which was very sad uh, and of course if you think about what then happened you know even at that time you you already had um adolf hitler gaining attention in the in the in the beer halls yes. just a few, just a few hundred miles away uh, and then you know it was it was unemployed people that gave these uh, fascist parties their votes because they were promised that this problem of the economy would be solved um and and yet the solution was was not some national thing the solution was a local currency pushing the value around locally in in Virgil, they only ever issued about a third of the notes that they printed because they didn't need to because as soon as someone got one all right they they're spending it, it and, as, the, the, and yeah. as soon as that person got it they pay someone with it or, and they would buy something and they looped back round through the municipal office very quickly and when they went to the bank the banks don't want to lose any value so they they used it for payments that they needed to make um before the month ran out so it was constantly shifting around and you think well a 10 pound note now if you spend it in your local high street where does it go does it stay there for a long time in the till does it go to one of the big supermarkets and then the value is whisked away from your yes it doesn't circulate locally anymore <clears throat> And, and so that's the real problem. So I, I like to think that we've we've got the um, the inventiveness to, to come up with something at least as good as this. And I think you know you've talked about Bitcoin um, and cryptocurrencies, and I think they might be part of the solution. But of course, you want something, as you said, something physical, something that's easy to handle, something where there's trust built in locally, face to face. So Bitcoin is maybe part of the answer the complete opposite of a CBDC because it's decentralized. There is no central bank. Um, but I think this idea of local currencies and local currencies can interact with each other. There can be a way to exchange mm. between one area, mm. one neighborhood, one region and another. That's all possible. You can imagine all these things are possible. So, so the, the, the biggest the biggest problem then is not so much coming up with something and, and producing it so that you have a currency and and its merit clearly is the fact uh, and and you've just expressed that so very clearly that they they obviously printed x many but they didn't need because people are just keeping and it stays in the economy in the in the community yeah. and it's yeah. not whisked away to foreign places and then just hoarded up and and recorded on on computers for big fat people like the one we just saw but the biggest headache then is trying to find a way that stops the government saying, ah, you can't do that because it's illegal. Um, yeah, and, and, and that, is the, that, uh, that is the problem, isn't it? Because as we've seen with that example, um, the central bank closed it down. And I imagine that that would happen right now if, if one of these other, like the Stroud Pound or mm. one of these, if that started to take over, 
um, from sterling in any particular area, the government would come down like a ton of bricks on that because you know but, they don't work for us. But if, the if, problem if, if every town, I mean, this is, this is the thing. I mean, we, it comes back to all the time, it seems to me, it comes back to the very, very basics that we put the government in place to run rules for us. We know that that system is corrupt and we know that they're being operated from, from they're just puppets being operated. But the principle should still be there. And if it's in the public mind that we put these people there and if every town has its own currency or every region has its own an alternative money I better not say currency because I get confused between the two has its own money that works within that just say county money so I'm in Sussex so the Sussex pound and then uh, you're in Nottingham I think you said so the Nottingham pound and there would be you know perhaps there is a um, a little bit of difference when you have to, you know, I've got a Sussex pound. Will you accept that? Oh well, it's it's not as it's not as valuable up here in Nottingham as the Nottingham, whatever. But if the people think actually we want this, we want this to happen, it's not for the government to say, well, you can't, because exactly, we yeah. put them yeah. into power, and yeah, and this is where we've got to keep pulling their reins back and saying, listen, you don't have the. It's, this is not a dictatorship as much as you think it is. And if you have to change the law, you have to change the law because the people will not tolerate this. And as you said, the other thing is we have this cash money, which is effectively what that is. We can still use Bitcoin. We may want to use the CBDCs if we, if we so wish. You know, we'll have the state thing and people can use that if they so wish. It's up to them. Well, but they well may not me. I won't be using it. No, no, no I'm, I, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm, I, what I'm saying is to the general public is, you know, the choice is the public's at the end of the day. Hopefully they would think, actually, do you know what? The last thing we'll use is the government stuff because this <laughs> other stuff gives us anonymity. It works well. And nobody else is watching every bloody thing that we do and, yeah, and yeah. penalising us for it. Yeah, yeah. But, well, it's that difference, isn't it, between what is lawful and what is legal. Exactly, or illegal, yes. And what governments tell us is illegal. Something like that that's benefiting everyone, where no one's got any complaints, where forgery is, and crime isn't a problem. Yes. Um, but they'll find a way to shut it down, which is to do with the, their rules that they've invented, nothing to do with the people, um, to say, you know, you can't do this, you can't can't issue your own currency whereas in fact you know the big corporations can can't they you think about the supermarkets and their loyalty schemes they're effectively issuing their own currency yeah and they get away with it they're not shut down um so this is maybe maybe the solution is something like that i mean i'm i'm not a legal expert either but you if there was a private members organization and everyone in your town was able to join it and then you've got these notes being passed around in that way maybe that would be a solution so we'd be left alone but it is a thing when when these are successful they tend to be stopped yes. and you can see why if, if people understood that money can be free money doesn't need to be debt based it doesn't need to be something you're constantly worried about it's just lubricant for buying and selling things um you know there, there are vested interests that, that don't like that at all yeah um who, who are using the money system to to remove value for themselves that's how it works the system that we that we've got so, so so i think i mean in some ways i think sometimes you need these threats coming down to make you look at the system that you actually have and go yeah. do you know what yeah. it works but it doesn't work in our favor really we've got this threat of this other system which is a hell of a lot worse yeah. Yeah. we need to just come up with something new and 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 as you say it, plenty of people can come up with the solutions to these things it's it's then pushing back against the legality that is the dictators saying you can't have it and and the people saying oh yes we can and we're doing it we and we're just do, because if i cut your lawn and you cut my hair well actually that's a stupid thing because i've got no hair to cut but you know what i mean if, if i do something for you and you do something for me there is really no difference in saying look i'll do that but i'll just write you an iou for that and then somebody else is using that iou yeah. why should that that little bit of paper that says, oh, I've done that for you and you've done this for me. And it's and, and you know, actually, I don't need it. But if you give it to my friend Frank, he, he could use it. I just don't see why the government need to get involved in any of these bits of paper that we call money. Yeah, well, there's the question, isn't it? I, I suppose is who are they working for? 
Exactly. Absolutely. And I think the more people wake up to that and start to ask that question, the stronger and more empowered we become and the weaker their argument is that actually they should be controlling the money. Because yeah, I don't know why they should be controlling anything, to be honest with you. In fact, I'm just going to put that picture of you up there because in the background, you've got that rather brilliant um, poster there. Government is not essential. And I think people will rejoice when they see that. Absolutely. Well, that, that's uh, my feeling entirely, Richard, is that, you know, we, we don't it, it's it's so obvious now, I think, that we do, that we don't need rulers. We just need a few simple rules. And in fact, we already have those. We, everyone understands them. Mm. Children, when they're seven, eight years old, understand the, the, the rules for interacting, uh, working with each other. And so, yeah, that's that's definitely my position now, and especially as these things are coming down the line. And mm-hmm. you know, for a long time, I was using my, my payment card, my debit card, uh, or a credit card for, for most things because, well, it's convenient, isn't it? Mm. Um, now I see, well, um, that's one step towards this system that doesn't look good at all, that looks like a, a digital trap. You know, so I've, I don't have the, the app on the phone, and I know lots of people do for paying with, with their phone. And the next step is a currency that is you know en- entirely digital. I think that's... Yeah, I mean, there is um, clearly there's space for some form of transferring money that's not on a note, because if you buy a service from anybody who's on the other side of the world or in another town or whatever, you want to be able to do that across, which is what Bitcoin or those sort of things would facilitate quite happily. Um, Mm -hmm. And because you can't, you know, post your note into the computer where the, the old DVD used to go and hope that it'll come out the other end. Although you never know, somebody may invent an incredibly sophisticated computer in which you could do that, that you, you sort of, thumb. but we don't need to. We, could, we, can, we can do that. We then, the problem then is getting that from the, whatever digital system it's been changed into, back into a note form, mm-hmm. which of course is what the banks have been facilitating. Uh, it's, but smaller privately owned banks, not these central banks, could do that service for us in a way that isn't going to penalise us. I mean, there'll be a fee, of course, because they're doing a service. Um, and again, it's pushing back against who regulates these banks and and gives you permission to do that. I mean, it, it, you, obviously, there needs to be rules and guidance so the bank doesn't fleece anybody. But yeah. it's not above the wit of man to be able to do that we've we've allowed rascals do it now why can't we let honorable people do it honorable people who are standing in and in honor do it instead yes and and history gives us many examples of different ways that trading is possible and of course you get some people saying oh we'll go back to a barter system i think well no yeah that again that might be useful for some things Mm. but but we need a, a currency of exchange that, that everyone trusts, that everyone will make use of. Um, and there could be more than one of those. Yes. Uh, and, and I think that's what this example from, from Virgil, maybe the, the Stroud as well, and these other ones that we've mentioned, they show us that, you know, there's, there is a completely different possibility. Uh, and, and the thing is, I mean, you know, if we're pushed down and they, and, and they become more and more dictator, dictatorial in the way that they do these things on the black market, you know, people will be doing stuff because they just won't want it monitored. They will be saying, look, you know, if you bring that removal van round and take myself, I'll pay you in something or other, whatever it is. So, I mean, people yeah. will still barter or w- whatever. It's just it won't be the the only system. And I think that fluidity of having lots of different mechanisms will be where we go. And And in a way, the threat, I mean, this is the thing I think that people may get some hope out of these threats are actually getting us to question the status quo and realize yeah. the status quo hasn't been as beneficial as we thought yeah the, the 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 fiat money system you know we're using it it doesn't work for us we're we're all of us constantly in debt and yeah. we never asked, we never asked to be and when you think about it just for a minute it doesn't make any sense that things are so expensive and are constant prices constantly going up and that constant worry that people have about about money it's completely unnecessary and i think when people understand that and they do see the nature of these threats um that's when we'll we'll get to see the real change and i think there are much cleverer people than me 
who can come up with exactly what that those systems might look like mm. in each local area exactly what the the currency script or the coins or whatever we use or the online thing whatever that will look like i think there are you know brilliantly clever people who can put that together for us but the key thing is and and what you've you've um, elicited here is we're talking about it we see yeah. there's the problem we know there's solutions and yeah. we're talking about it and hopefully people watching are maybe for the first time thinking i'd never looked at it like that I'd never even occurred to me that A, the fiat currency has those problems or that a central bank is issuing those problems and and just automatically perhaps thinking, actually, that local currency that stays within the system isn't mm. being siphoned off to other countries or big corporations that is helping independent companies and shops and, you know, your butcher, your candlestick maker and so on and your cobbler and all these little companies work within the community again as we once did yeah exactly i've been i've been you know you've probably seen these there we are uh there we are these uh, 20 pound notes but it's not really a 20 pound note it's uh part of this campaign um cash is freedom now i think really more accurately it could say cash could be freedom if yes. if we controlled the the cash system but what's interesting about these leaflets is i've had no pushback at all about this i've, I've handed these to shopkeepers market stall holders friends uh, you know people running shops and stores even people working in big stores and it gets a conversation going and when people see this idea of programmable digital currency everyone is on our side yeah on this issue everyone but certainly everyone i've spoken to which is certainly a few hundred people said yeah we, we don't want this we, we, where do, not... where where can people get those leaflets from um okay so whether you can see that i'm not sure maybe we'll put it in the description there's an email address it's very small oh okay uh, if you, yeah I'll, I'll i'll copy it down at small. the end and put it in a, we'll put that in the description but you can email them and um i think for a small charge you get a whole bundle of those sent to you oh brilliant yeah it would be it would be good i, I you see i've got a pub just down the road from me and I popped that they had a um, a break in about a month or so ago, and some of the some of the stuff was obviously not taken, and it was just deposited at the back of the pub. And I'd, mm. I'd happened to just come out of my back gate to see off the lovely Julia who'd been staying overnight, and and I saw a, a crate of beer, and I thought, well, if I don't hoik it now, somebody else will. So I took the beer, and then I went to the pub, took it back to them. I said, oh, by the way there was this crate of beer left outside your pub. I don't know whether somebody bought it, didn't like it or whatever. And they said, oh, no, we had a break in. They obviously didn't take all of it. So I got into a conversation with them about how they use, you know, I said, are people using cash or are they using uh, their phones or cards? And they said, oh, no, it's mostly all on d online digital stuff. They all pay like that. Mm -hmm. So then I said to them about, well, y you know, you heard about these central bank. No, nope, hadn't heard any of it, hadn't yeah. heard the threat. And I, and I said, maybe, you know, you should be thinking about keeping cash alive and the privacy because every drink that somebody has will be recorded and it yeah. will be on their social credit. You, you've drunk too much. You're an alcoholic, you know. You all, too much beer. That's too right. much yeah. beer. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, and sometimes it's, it's those very personable ways that might make somebody think, you think, actually, I don't want somebody else to know that I drink 20 pints a week. That's my own personal, you know, I, it's not me, obviously, I don't drink that. Um, but it, but some people go, well, I don't want anyone to know that. That's, you know, that's snooping. Well, and also that it, <clears throat> that it just won't work. If it's programmable currency, yeah. it means you're outside your district. And we've started to hear a lot of uh, ideas there, haven't we, about people staying in a 15-minute zone or something like this. And again, you know, oh, this is a conspiracy theory. Well, it's policy that's being enacted all over the all over the country and lots of places around the world. The programmable currency makes it possible for a future central bank to say, well, you're not buying any beer because mm. you're or outside your designated area and of course that kind of thing is is terrifying and if you're a bunch of lads and, or lasses come to that and you want to go on a pub crawl and they say no it's only two pints you can have two pints we're restricting that now because you know you get a bit leery and you get a bit drunk and you've put this on facebook or you we've seen you you know staggering down the street we don't like that so you can only buy two pints so your pub crawl suddenly becomes just a non-entity 
yeah. thanks yeah. to the central bank digital currencies. And, yeah. and it, it, it's an attack on, on everything, isn't it? Something like that, when you think about it, it you look at the situation in, in, in China, in some of the cities now where you've got this social credit score system linked to digital currency, linked to digital ID, everything on a, on a phone. Um, you think, is that really the model that we want to follow? Mm. We've not voted on this. We've not been asked about this. And yet these things are, seem to be being drip fed into our society and our culture. And they don't fit. People are, are nervous about them and worried about them. And I think with with good reason, because they're they're not our way of life, are they? Absolutely. To, to do yeah, and I'm and I'm not I'm not vouching that people go on pub crawls and do all that. I'm just saying it's that freedom to have the choice. If somebody's taking that away from you, the choice should be you, and the responsibility of how much you drink is obviously down to you. But you don't want a nanny state becoming, you know, even more than a nanny, a dicta- yeah, dictator, di- complete know, dictator, yeah, and saying that for whatever you know, it is. Want- don't really want the government to be in charge of anything like that. It's yeah. Not information and not information about people and deciding what's real information, what's not real information, it, it, and you know, and complete control over the currency. No, that's not how it should be. Yeah. And, and and yes, that example showed um, that you know, a hundred years ago, that there were there were alternatives that were put into put into play, and just worked, just worked with you know, real success. Gareth, it's been a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for joining me and telling me about the Virgil currency, labour certificates, a different type of money. And it will be interesting to hear the comments and the responses to that because I know that, uh, as you said, there are very clever people working on ideas and thinking about this. Um, I mean, it is actually an amazing time to be alive because so much, you know, instead of the fearful factor, is sometimes you need that sort of uh, conflict to challenge you and go well you know what's what we don't have to put up with what we've got now we don't want that what's the alternative we'll make a better future we do something much better yeah and, yeah and yeah. so so that's the optimistic glass uh, half full or three quarters full really absolutely um, so yeah. i really appreciate you coming on and telling us that because i think the more examples we see of how people have done this stuff in the past it shows it's possible mm. yeah yeah, and, and that, right, it's great. Thanks, thanks very much for having me on your show, Richard. It's not a, at all. And I just, just one more time, I'm going to show that big. There we are. Government is not essential. I must get a copy of one of those and stick that up in the studio. I think that is, that is such an uh, you know they may be um, useful, but they're not essential. Not but essential. Absolutely, no. I love it. I love essential. it. Brilliant, Gareth. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, Thank you. I hope people have got something out of that. Look forward to your comments and suggestions and things, of course. Uh, I'll be back again with monologues and uh, more interviews, so keep watching the channel, supporting and sharing and blah, blah, blah. But uh, for now, from Gareth and the Virgil Currency and myself, from now, bye-bye. <laughs>